Hello YouTube, it's been a while. I had actually shot a video with the GoPro and fried the SD card, so I lost all of the footage driving with the Volvo Club, the Volvo Owners Group. We had a Cars and Coffee morning caffeinated drive back in uh, mid-May. Um, went all the way to Fort Collins, be the back roads, uh, Masonville, Wrist Canyon, beautiful trip. Lost all the footage, it's in the ether. Maybe someday we'll find it, but until then, this is what we got. We're back in the shop. Today I have um, had a P0016 crankshaft position, crank camshaft position, crankshaft position sensor error code on the regular OBD2 reader. Um, and that uh, happened back in August of last year, August of 22, and then again about 55 days later in September of 22 on some referee road trips I was making, just regional stuff. Um, everything was fine, cleared those codes, never came back. Until end of March when I arrived in Dallas, Texas for a referee um, event, and then 11 days later, 12 days later in April when I was coming back in um, Amarillo, Texas, it happened again the next day as I was leaving to head home to Denver. Um, everything was fine, cleared it, never showed up again until last week. Um, happened again uh, early June, um, so I have another referee road trip coming up. I'm like, this is not an expensive part. I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it and get in there. It's easy to do. It's on the on the, this car. We only have an exhaust exact exhaust camshaft position sensor. There's only variable valve timing on this car on the exhaust cam. So, I think it's a pretty easy job. I got the parts. It wasn't very expensive. Let's uh, see what we got here. All right, we're taking a look. This is Ragnar, the Volvo V70 2.4 Turbo 2002. It's a P2 front wheel drive. I'm spilling the beans a little bit here because clearly. That is not normally what this looks like. It has some um, surprise little bits and parts on it. So we'll come back to that in probably another video on what's going on with Ragnar. But I've only found videos on these engines on the uh, camshaft position sensor changing on units that have the intake variable valve timing. This car does not have that and that would be located right here behind this plate or in a housing that's covering it. We have that on our XC70, which is a 2007. It has both um, intake variable valve timing and exhaust variable valve timing, but this car has only the exhaust variable valve timing. So my camshaft position sensor is somewhere back here behind all of these goodies holding this engine brace. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to get the air box out of here. I've seen this um, area one time ever. It was about a year and a half ago when I did the um, oil trap PCV system replacement on this car, which is rather complicated. There's some, um, there's some, uh, uh, there's another video that shows some oil trap tips on how I did that. But I know that this has to come out. The whole air breather system comes out. This cross brace is coming out. This is coming off the top. And I think there's some side bracing coming off the side, which is kind of hard to get to because this big pipe for the um, coolant line on the oil trap PCV system cooling line gets in the way. So I don't remember exactly how we're going to get in there, but I know that we're going to get back underneath that cover to get to this. I don't think it's too complicated or too messy, so hopefully this goes pretty easy. Got a little bit of a stormy day happening here in the shop. It is just starting to sprinkle in Louisville, Colorado with our afternoon spring it's the, uh, what is this, Friday, June 9th. It's a Friday afternoon and we're getting a rainstorm. We've had some pretty good rain this month and some big lightning storms. So uh, maybe we'll catch one of these on the film and you'll get a special Colorado spring afternoon treat. All right, maybe we'll catch a big lightning bolt here as this storm's coming in behind me. Um, I just want to give you an update. Uh, on the regular OBD2 system, it reads as a P0016 crankshaft position, camshaft position, bank one, whatever. So it's telling you that something's wrong with those position sensors. Um, when you put this into Vita, I had done this in August and September of 2022, didn't have Vita. I did it again in March and April of 2023 when it happened. Um, I didn't have, I, I had Vita, but I just did it with the OBD2 and cleared it. When it happened in June, I left the code sitting in there until I could get home and put this into Vita. I'm going to post some pictures of that. You'll see those right now. Um, but in Vita, it actually gives you information on what you got to change and what's going on. It says, it said um, the code in Vita is ECM-643A crank, excuse me, camshaft position exhaust signal too low. So it's a faulty uh, electrical wiring signal coming to the um, to the computers. Um, so that needs to be changed. Um, not a very difficult project, uh, but let me show you the parts I got. 
All right, here's the parts. I ordered these through FCP Euro. We are not talking about very large or complicated, expensive parts. The hard part, as I just pointed, is getting back there to find where we put them in. Um, and I actually looked up in my Haynes manual. It doesn't even show how to get to an exhaust. It just shows this simple one in the front, which is not what I have. I do not have intake variable valve timing. I have exhaust variable valve timing only on this engine. So here's what I got. Um, these are not expensive parts. This is the actual sensor itself. It is a OEM manufacturer aftermarket part. Um, FCP did not have a Volvo specific one. So I'm assuming this is who makes them for Volvo. Um, that part was uh, 80 bucks. And then they also recommended getting this. It is a new cover. So somewhere underneath all that back in there is a cover something like this. So we're going to find out here in a little bit if we got the right one. I'm assuming maybe these crack or break. Um, and this was only $20, $22. So I went ahead and threw it into the order. It is a Volvo unit on the cover. Uh, looks like that fits right into the top of there. Um, simple stuff. I just got to do some surgery to get to it. Just pulling out the air filter, and what do we have here? All kinds of bits. We got uh, bug parts, straw. This must be from that Texas trip coming across the uh, northwest Texas into Amarillo. And all the wind, all the debris through Kansas on my way to Dallas. A year of this crap. It's been a while since I had this open, but um, we're not due for an air filter change. This thing's still pretty good. Just going to blow it out. I think I'm still like 15, 10,000 miles, something like that away from an air filter. Maybe I'll go grab another one. I don't know, but that's nasty. We're going to clean that out. Okay, so initial prog progress um, is pretty easy. Got the air intake coming from here to the air box. The air box is out. Not sure if I'm going to take this. That goes the air intake from the filter box to the turbo. Um, I'm going to need to lift the car and undo that bracket from underneath the car if this has to come out. But I'm going to see if we can get there without it. Um, now you can see I got the covers off. I got the cross braces off. The um, from the strut goes across the strut mounts and connects the top engine brace. But you can see where these bolts are at. There's one, two, three, four. But I'm still thinking we got to be underneath here. I don't know if we can get there with this staying in place and just working around it, or whether I'm gonna have to jack this thing up and come in from underneath to get that um, bracket off and a couple hoses that connect in there. Um, and then I can. I'm pretty sure. That right there, there it is. It just came in focus. What well, my finger is tapping, I'm pretty sure that is the sensor coming out of the uh, variable, variable, that's hard to say, variable valve timing on the exhaust camshaft sensor. I think that's its connector right there. So hopefully we don't have an electrical issue. Looks like it's been taped or something a few times. Um, but we're going to take this apart since we're going to replace the whole thing um, and we'll check it out when we get there. All right, I have the top. Uh, engine brace is out. It was just four bolts. One, two, three, four. Interestingly enough, we have big ones on the inside two and little ones on the outside two that just go into another bracket brace. So we can now see this is the cover on the uh, unit that is indeed down there where I was tapping before. Let's see where my finger's tapping. That is the sensor coming out. It's coming out. Of the, um, it's kind of facing down in the orientation of my finger and it comes out that way for the sensor to connect to the electrical lines. Um, so this needs to come out, but this has to come out of the way first. Um, I think we're going we're gonna to start here. We're going to take off this bracket and see what we can open up to get to the bolts on this bracket and then we should be good to go. I can feel a bolt underneath here on the back side of this bracket, uh, but it is smooth. If you see this, it is a smooth surface and a Torx bolt that goes in there. So I'm not gonna be able to get a wrench on it. I have to get in from the top. So it's gonna have to come off. All right, so I'm gonna try to film what I'm doing here live. Um, there are, let me point here real quick. On this bracket, ah, bouncing everywhere. We, on this bracket, this is uh, holding that outside engine hoist. Um, but I gotta get it off to get to this, back to the engine. Um, and this is, that is also used to hold the top mount for the, for the um, engine crankcase. But anyway, so I have three bolts. There's three 14s. I'll see if I can find them for you. We have one right here in front where my finger is tapping underneath the hose there. Hard to see. There it is. You can see it. Uh, there's a second one back here. And then down below here, down in the colored hoses for the turbo control module. Um, let's see if I can get my finger to it. Right there is one. And I did this once before. By coming in here, back here, just get underneath the ABS control lines. And I'm trying to do this and can't really see very well right at the moment. Oh, there it is. I found it. 
If I come in here with a six inch extension and I find it, I already loosened the bolt. So there, I'm on it. I can just get enough angle over here underneath this and it pops free. It's not super tight. Um, so that comes free and then the other two I can get. I thought I had done this before without taking off. Sorry, you're looking straight into an air intake pipe to the turbo. There you go. You can see what I'm doing. I just have a little bit of throw here and that bottom one comes out and we should be good to go. There is success. So you can get in and get that plate off. It is three bolts. It does have on this engine two pins. I'm going to try to get to where you can see them. So when I got the bolts out, it felt like there was a missing fourth bolt, but there's a pin on the top. This pin, I like kind of popped it, just hit it with the uh, ratchet just to see if it would vibrate it free. And it started to wiggle, but there was a pin here. And there's another pin right down here by the blue hose. So maybe you can see that it's kind of darker. This one's silver. I'll come in below and see if you can see it. Get my hand through here. Down there. All right, I'm pointing right at it. It's just past my finger. It's a little bit rusty looking. I got my finger on it there. So there's two pins that hold that plate in once the three bolts are off. I was worried there was a fourth bolt, but you can get this off with the fuse box still intact with the intake line to the, the air in, uh, intake to the turbo. And you can leave all these electricals. You can get to it. You just got to figure out a way to get into those two, uh, three 14 millimeter bolts and then start popping this out. It has to come out straight because of the pins. So you can't lift it, but you can get it to vibrate. Now you can clearly see the cover, the sensor coming out of it and the connector. So because I got in there, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the battery. I don't think I have to, but I'm going to because we're dealing with electrical stuff on this Volvo and I don't want to fry anything. So we're going to disconnect the battery. Okay, I got the cover off. Uh, where'd that cover go? Here it is. Here's what we got. It's This is the inside of it. You can see the sensor is what I'm hanging on to and the electrical connector slides over the top. Um, this what I, My fingers are on the male part and the electrical connector is the female. There's the inside. There's the outside. It sits in there in this orientation to what I'm holding it. Um, just behind there is where it goes in and then the connector comes out. This is what the inside looks like. You can see the little magnetic end of the sensor is there. But I'm going to show you what this thing is doing. It's kind of cool. Let's see if this will light up. I can get a little bit more light in here. Oh, that might be too much. So you can see it's kind of cool. There are one, two, three, four different lobes of different thicknesses on that cam, the exhaust camshaft and that magnetic sensor must be doing a timing of sending a pulse through the line and it knows how long, um, however long the pulse is and that the speed the engine's running is which position the cam is in based upon the size of these four nodes. We got a big one and small one and even smaller one and a really, actually I think this is the I'm not sure which one's the biggest. Let me look at this with the light. I can't see it. All right, I think the bottom one is the biggest. One on the left there is middle. Top is small. The right side is small. So somehow those four nodes that are all different sizes and different orientations are telling that magnet sending an electrical sensor through the line um, with the engine speed where the camshaft is actually sitting at any moment in time. So um, it's kind of clean in there. I'm going to get the camera down a little bit closer. See if I can get this. I'm going to drop it in here and see if we can see it. See if it will focus. Where's my camera? Yeah, there's just a big bearing sitting in there. So you can kind of see it. It's pretty clean. I'm going to wipe it out. There's a little bit of debris in the bottom. No oil leakage, really. Just a little moisture. A little oil seep over the years, shall we say. It's been two years, probably, since that was opened up. Um, but I'm going to just clean off the rag. I am going to replace all of this. I need the nut. This little nut here needs to come out so I can mount my other sensor to it. So this is pretty simple. Um, we're gonna get this back together. To show you this, just took off that 10 millimeter. It's a little tiny nut that just holds the sensor into the cover. And really interesting, first thing I noticed when I pulled this is the old sensor. When I pulled it out, see this groove right there? A little U-shaped valley. There's supposed to be an O-ring right there. And I know that because the new one has an O-ring right there. But there is no hint of an o-ring anywhere in here this has been off and not put back together correctly so that might be why there was some debris and dirt inside there just coming from the outside don't know if that was causing any problems with it to cause it to go bad but there is no sign of an o-ring sensor anywhere when i pulled that off and when it came out just so you're aware it was bolted to that bolt. That sensor was sitting in there permanently until I undid that 10 millimeter bolt as you saw in the last segment. So um, it's not something I did. It is missing in action. We're gonna get this put back together right. Just mounted the new sensor into the cover, the new cover. Gonna keep the old one as just a backup. 
it just goes in there a little bit. You can see the magnet head of the sensor just sticking into the cap a little bit. Now I'll put the cap and the assembly back together. The cover with the sensor in it are back in, just two T40s. Uh, I'm not seeing a, um, it's just a sensor cover cap going back on. So it's just two T40s, little bolts. There's no specification on a torque setting. I'm gonna see if I can get this sensor back on here. While I'm filming, that never seems to work when I'm trying to do it one-handed. We'll see what happens. Oh, it went in nice and easy. Let's see if we get a click. There it is. It is on. All right, we start putting this back together. Plate first, the big silver plate. Quick update on the progress. This is the last trick we're going to be able to see this cap with the sensor. It is connected. The brace is on the outside of the cover that helps mount the um, engine mount for the top mount. And then this engine hoist bracket is mounted again it also helps hold this clamp in place for the electrical lines um for the harness so we just got four bolts here one two oh you can't even see what i'm doing one two three four the two big ones go back here on these two and the two small ones go here and that's on the big bracket that goes in next engine mount is back uh attached to the engine these are set to 37 foot pounds i think at this point i can put the blue bit covers back on there's a story coming on that later turret goes back on turret goes back on across the uh, strut mounts and then it mounts into the engine and then I think all we have left is just to clean out the air filter blow it off with the air uh, compressed air vacuum out some uh, debris some silt that's picked up through the system um, we'll vacuum this out get this cleaned out a little bit put it back together and then take it for a test drive the rains have cleared out it's a beautiful afternoon all right, Ragnar's back together. Everything's put back in here. Got all the bolts back on. Gotta close this. Uh, bolts are back on, everything's torqued. Put everything with the uh, anti-seize compound. It's all battened together. Still need to find one of these uh, R bolts for this um, fuel rail cover and the little vents behind it on the intake. So I have the one on this side. I just need one for this side. I'm still looking. Maybe the uh, ethernet out there will find me one, Interworld. All right. So the only thing left to do, see, it's all back together. Everything's connected, cleaned up. Let's give it a start. Let's drop this, see what happens. Let's do it for real. Yeah. If I start this up, hopefully we have no check engine lights. Let's see what happens, world. You and me together. No check engine. Driver door open. Let's close this. Nothing. No messages. No messages! Revs up nicely. Sounds phenomenal. Time for a test drive. Here we go. I think I fixed it. 